Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be installing a CyberPower rack mountable power strip to the server rack. But before we do that, we have to do a little bit of math to make sure that the circuits in this room can support having three UPS battery backups plugged into that one power strip. So, without any further waiting, let's go ahead and do some math. Okay, so in order to figure out if this will actually work, you should probably do the math at home first before you go out and buy the power strip of your choice, unlike what I did, because the power strip is sitting somewhere around in here, and I didn't do any of the math to make sure this would work. Anyway, so there's a couple things you have to know. First, you're going to have to go look at your circuit breaker to figure out what kind of amperage is on the circuit for that particular room. In this particular room, I have a 15 amp circuit in my circuit breaker. I also know that it's 120 volts because, well, I live in America and that's just what I'm told. It could be something else, but I'm pretty sure it's 120 volts. And then we have to figure out the amount of wattage I'm actually using from this room. We will be guesstimating this number a little bit to figure out what the peak wattage I am using in this room. And we'll also figure out roughly about what the minimum is. And by no means is this going to be 100% accurate math. It'll only be a guesstimation about how much everything is using. And if I go over the amount of amperage, well, I'll probably just pop a breaker and then have to figure out something to do in the future to mitigate potentially popping a breaker. So what do I know? I know that each of my servers, and I have two of them, by the way, uses about 220 watts peak of power. We also know from a previous video that the networking equipment uses about 18 watts, which I rounded up to 20 watts of power. And according to the manufacturer of the monitor that is connected to the server rack, that uses about 60 watts at peak. However, we don't know what the peak power of the upside are because I don't have the right tools to figure that out. However, we can do some guesstimation based off some other random information I found off the internet and assume that each battery uses about 20 watts of power to regenerate power or recharge the batteries that it has after a power outage. So we have to put that into our formula as well. Now eventually I plan to add the truncator, my gaming computer, and also the Asus ROG Swift to my rack mount. Well, sort of on the same power strip at least. So if we add all these numbers together, we get a total of 1380 watts of power being used at peak usage, which isn't actually too bad. Now for the hard stuff. Okay, so the formula we're using is to convert watts to amperage using AC power because, well, in the United States. So this particular formula is going to be I equals P divided by PF times V. And what that stands for is amps, which is I, watts, which is P, and PF is power factor, and V is volts. Power factor has something to do with resistance impotence on load or something like that. I don't actually know, but I'm gonna give myself a power factor of one, even though I'll probably never get that type of efficiency, I just wanna make the math easy. So, if we plug in our numbers, the 1380 watts that we calculated earlier from the total peak usage, and then the 120 volts that we know is being supplied by the outlet, multiplied by our power factor, we get a total amperage of 11.5. So I've been told that American Outlet has a plus or minus 10% variance that it allows for just in case people overload uh, the circuitry, but it's only temporary. Luckily in my case, I'm actually below that 15 amperage, so I should be okay because I'm still below the plus or minus 10% variance that is allowed. Uh, and remember, this is at peak usage, so I may never even see peak usage. However, this does not account for the lights in the room that I'm using, which are eight watts each, by the way. That also doesn't account for the hallway lights that are a part of the circuit, which are also eight amps each, and there's probably about four or five of those. So I still think even if you were to add those to this, I would still be safe because typically those lights aren't on anyway when I'm gaming and doing all the server work all together. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever hit a peak load on my servers anyway because they don't really do that much work. Unless I'm benchmarking or doing something that may require for me to put a significant load on them in the first place. So again, I think I'm good to go, which means we'll go ahead and install the CyberPower power strip. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I got that right, right? Okay. Okay, so here is the CyberPower CPS121 5RM 
rack mountable uh, power strip. Inside, we quite literally have the power strip itself. A very nice, long, very, very long uh, power cable that goes to it. And that looks like about it. Uh, let's see if we can get this thing open. So all it came with was a limited warranty piece of paper uh, that just tells you about your warranty and how to avoid it if you want to do so. And this is basically all there is. Uh, it's just a small little power strip that's rack mountable. It looks like it will fit any normal uh, server rack that's 19 inches. It has 10 plugs on the back. And then of course your standard plug uh, for an American home that fits actually perfectly right into one of these if I wanted to. All right, let's go ahead and get this installed. Okay, so we're gonna try and install this thing right about here. Uh, probably actually right here at the very base of the server rack and I think that'll be good because all the plugs of course are on the back. We should be good to go. Just need to do some very minor cable management uh, afterwards and uh, that's it. So let's go ahead and get this thing mounted. So it turns out we actually can't mount it here because apparently this is actually wider than it is on the other side or the front facing side or maybe back facing side. And that's about a good inch of space. So we're going to actually have to mount it uh, somewhere else uh, on one of the other sides and see if that works. Okay so a little hard to tell but you can definitely see that I got it screwed in here and then also screwed in way over here on the other side. So this does in fact uh, fit a standard 19 inch. Uh, rack. I was a little afraid of that because apparently on the inside the mounting points are wider uh, than 19 inches. All right, before we move on to the final results, I just want to say cheers to the man who brought me this delicious beverage all the way from Kentucky. It's outstanding. Shout out to John. Thank you so much. All right, let's check out these results. Okay, just a quick recap. This server is on this UPS and you can see it's currently using 207 watts of power. All of this networking equipment and this server is on this bottom UPS here. And then the gaming computer is on this UPS here. So I'm going to turn this on and the other two servers are already running and we're going to see what happens. Well, everything seems to be working perfectly fine. I got a benchmark running. All the lights are on as far as I can tell. The hallway lights are on that are connected to the circuit and I haven't blown a breaker yet. I don't think I'm ever going to reach that peak wattage. Uh, at home, but in the professional environment or enterprise environment, you would definitely not want to have everything on one circuit. You'd want to split it up. And even at home, you would probably benefit from splitting up a lot of computers onto different circuits. But in my case, that's not something I can do, so I have to have everything on that one 15 amp circuit and hope I don't ever blow it. And on that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.